I can really feel the acceleration in this sim. This is crazy real. A private pilot flying a full motion 737 sim. You know what I want to do before we go? Let's go stall this thing. Can we do that? Sure. Because why the heck not? For this production, Brock and I headed to Atlanta. And luckily what we had planned to film was not affected by the crappy weather. The Delta Flight Museum is a really cool facility and it's connected to the Atlanta International Airport. But the featured attraction is the full motion sim. It is a real deal flight simulator. It was built in 1998, cost about $12 million at the time. We're here thanks to additional sponsorship from iCloth Avionics for this trip and a lot of help from Paul Carsons. He was an early Patreon supporter for Flight Chops and is also a 737 captain. I would say that it's unique in the world to have a full motion simulator like that, yeah. that the public can go in. The simulator is a 737-200 and it was used for Delta's pilot training and I actually trained in it. So this was a really exciting opportunity and it presented some challenges from a production standpoint, especially regarding sound. So my first impression walking into that sim was just how incredibly real it feels. Lighting, everything, like the seats, it's really real, right down to every switch and knob. It's classified as a level D flight simulator. And when the pilots finish their training in this, they can go directly to a revenue flight. They don't have to fly the aircraft at all. But it's at the museum for fun and even Brock got a shot at landing it. The sim can hold five people, so on top of the operator, you can bring three of your friends and take turns flying it. I held on for dear life. <laughs> that was fun, man. Now you're gonna have to wait until next time to see Brock's attempt at landing it. But I flew with Jason to take it a little more seriously. We're gonna go motion too, yeah, right? So we need to clear out. We're everything. gonna go motion? Yeah. Okay. So we uh, need to know who's not needing to be here and close the door and all that good stuff, right? We're gonna close the door and get rid of whoever doesn't need to be here and make this thing happen, yeah, right? I'm with you. So Brock, you, you give us the go-ahead when you are ready, okay? I'm here for you guys. That's Paul. When that door closes and the drawbridge goes up, you are in a completely immersive environment. It is real. And the sound is also really amazing. And I wanted to capture that in the way we recorded it. So I dedicated a separate mic to get the ambience, but also patched into the intercom. So in these airplanes, you don't have a hot mic intercom. So you just talk to each other with regular voice. So we came up with a workaround that involved keying the mic each time we wanted to talk to each other. But I struggled to get perfect sync between the ambience and the intercom track, so it's sometimes out by about a half frame, so there's an occasional slight echo. In the real world, they actually have to put them on one ear like that, so they can talk to each other. But they're working on it. They're working, but on, they're it. working on making it so you can have a nice uh, symmetric, because that must be weird to have one ear always in an ear cup. Yeah. So that's a little weird, but it's good that they're kind of fixing that. So what, what are we doing? Are we doing a takeoff? Yes, sir. You want to do that first? Let's do it since we're here. Okay, so auto throttle is armed. That is a Bose A20 headset. We're giving one away as a seasonal grand prize. Drop what you're doing, go to flightchops.com and win it. Seriously. You can push the brakes on if you're rolling. There you go. Oh, jeez, I didn't even realize we were rolling. Yeah. Okay, that is awesome that <laughs> you felt the nose oleo. Yeah. <laughs> Park brakes right here. Just mash them. Now let go. Got Car brakes up. Now uh, bring your seat forward a little bit. Your head position, you should be looking over this, right. but not see the top of it. Does that feel good see, with I, your arms? I see a tiny bit. Oh, yeah. Right. Okay. Now you can adjust your rudder pedals and bring those back to you by turning that knob. If you want yeah. a little bit, no, they're good. Yeah. yeah I'm good, yeah. I think now your seat position is good. So press it down, that'll kick the brake off. Yep. Yep. There you go. Okay, You're all set. It. I am all set. Okay, so take off. We'll bring them up 40%, and then we're gonna hit these two buttons, and that's gonna to go toga, that's auto throttle. The throttle's gonna come up. I'll call your air speeds. We're gonna do an 80 knot check, and then our V speeds. So I'm gonna set my air speed to about 131. That's our V1 speed, and our V2 is 140. You ready? I'm ready. Okay, sir, flaps five are set. So go I'm gonna let off the brakes and press brakes. these. How do you so press these two buttons when I... Well, yeah, 40% first, then mash, put those two buttons on. So, so keep the brakes on, 40%. Well, you so can, yeah, you can let them go. I let, it's good. It does its own thing? That's right. So once it gets to 40, we're no, good. No, you're good. You're going to release the brakes, you're up. Brakes are off. That's it, you're flying. And I'll give you an 80 knot call. And you're going to steer with the rudders just like normal, normal airplane. Okay, air speed is alive. I can't believe it. I can really feel the acceleration oh, in this sim. This is crazy real. All right, 80 knot check. 
The sensation of acceleration is created by pitching back, so you kind of get pushed into your seat. And the simulator accurately recreates every bump in the runway. It's amazing. Okay, our V1, rotate. V2. We're going to climb up 15 degrees nose up. I got a positive rate of climb. Well, get your gear up, okay? There we go. Okay, that was awesome. That's it. And just hold it about 15 degrees. You don't want to go past that. You're doing 170. And you want to, at a thousand feet, which we are, drop the nose about 10 degrees. So look at your attitude. It's all attitude now, right? I couldn't resist the urge to edit the takeoff to that exciting music. It really did feel that cool. You're very brave to try the takeoff right off the way. And you can see uh, that it took a lot of configuration and a lot of explanation of the V speeds and whatnot. My experience with the takeoff was twofold. It was amazing how real the acceleration felt. And second, I had the same feeling I have in the steerman where I did not want to look down. And I don't know if that was just my tailwheel background where I'm afraid if I look down for a second, I'll lose it. We look outside, you're right. Okay. We let our flying partner, the uh, first officer or captain, call out the speeds or some airplanes, it does it automatically. I feel like I'm going to push it down, so should I trim yeah. nose down? Yeah. Where is the trim? Trim's right here. On the, big... It's on the, on the yoke. And just push down, you're going to see this big wheel. Go. There you go. Keep going. The trim isn't working for me now. The other problem was I was fighting with the trim because I didn't fully understand the switch was a split switch. Okay. Off the start. So I was like, why is it only sometimes working? Oh, there's two of them. Oh, you got to hit both at once. Is that the idea? Yes. The trim is really cool because it's a split switch. So you got to hit both sides in order for it to work. It's embarrassing to call myself an av geek not having known that but I'm gonna blame it on most of my recent flying having been stick and rudder and the Super Cub and the Stearman. So I've really been away from high tech stuff for a long time. You got 3,000 feet. Yeah, so I'm just getting it fixed because I had so much nose down there. Yeah. And your, your auto throttle is gonna hold our airspeed. So I'm gonna set our speed about 210. And uh, if you wanna climb to five. Climb to five, yeah. okay. So I just don't do anything with power? The power, see how it's coming up? Oh. It's on servos, so it'll just automatically come up for you. Got it. Okay, so I'm gonna pitch what I need. Hold it about right there, and, and just trim it. There you go. There's your 5,000, so you're gonna probably want to pitch down. But you're, you're gonna need about five degrees nose up positive to, to like, hold it. Like at all times, okay. All right, so you wanna do a turn? Yeah, let's do it. Let's just get some maneuvering so I get to feel this thing. Okay, so let's go to, uh, let's go north. So I set my heading bug. Uh, 360. I'm fighting with pitch a little bit here. I got a trim. You were noticing a pitching up as the throttles came up. Jason had the auto throttles engaged for you. And then when you would lower the nose, the auto throttles would come back and that accentuates right. the pitching. Do you want autopilot or do you want to manually do it? I'll just manually do it. All right. And roll about 30 degrees. So you're at 10, there's 20. Good job. Great. Right now what I'm looking at Brock is I'm trying to maintain a 30 degree uh, bank angle. I'm trying to maintain 5,000 feet. I'm not really looking at speed, but I guess that's just a thing that I don't need to worry about as long as I keep it level, right? Want to wipe those out again? Now you can see my altitude dropping because I wasn't concentrating. <laughs> it was better before. All right, sorry, I didn't call your roll out. So we just blew that. That's fine. Yeah, as, yeah, so I'm being a filmmaker for a second there and I blew my... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I blew my altitude at my head. Very good. Uh, it's an awesome feel, isn't it? Yeah, this, this feels more like an airplane than I expected for something this incredibly complicated looking. So I was quite intimidated by this whole thing, obviously. It's a lot going on with it. I tried really hard to get on board and stop thinking about making films and not screwing up. I just focused on what I did know. Fundamentally, the controls are the same. The six-pack instruments are the same and really it wasn't that crazy different. So that to me was the takeaway that I did not expect. I expected to be laughing about how bad I did. I am totally chasing the trim. Yeah, now trim down a little bit, just two clicks. One, two. All right, let's go. Jason, the, the auto throttles are causing that pendulum yeah. effect. Yeah, I knew as soon as you turned that off, your altitude control would be a lot better. So I tapped Jason on the shoulder and I knew that put you in a little more task saturation. What did you feel as soon as those auto throttles came off? So I'm gonna shut the auto throttle down, okay? As soon as I didn't feel like I was fighting it anymore. Right. Yeah, there was a trend happening that I couldn't get in front of. So I was behind this undulating, yep. uh, it was obviously pilot induced, 
because I wasn't dealing with the slowness of the spooling up or whatever. Right. right? Yeah. So what you were uh, feeling was the pendulum effect of an underwing engine. When the power comes up, it forces the nose up. So you have to fight it. Get some power in there. Right. And the, the more solid you hold the pitch, the less you have to let the throttles work. So yeah, it was kind of pilot induced, but I knew as soon as you click that off and got your hand on it, that you could balance those two just naturally, and you did. Yeah, that no, was cool. That was an awesome thing to see because <laughs> I knew it, and I knew I was waiting and waiting, and then I had to say something. And that really helped me feel like I had full control. So the next logical step was to try stalling it, of course. We just took off, let's see. You're gonna go 5,000 level off, and then we'll drop the power. What am I looking at for power to know I'm not like doing something bad like with RPM, so it's the end gauge? Yeah, you're good. You're right in the green, it's perfect. Uh, Eper is really what you're concerned with. Eper. What does Eper mean? Engine pressure ratio. It's just a ratio between in and out, the inlets and the, uh, the exhaust. Just try to hold that 5,000, that power all the way to idle. Okay, power's coming idle, we're gonna hold 5,000. Good. Want to describe what'll happen? The speed will get to such and such and then a stick shaker, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, you'll hear that stick shaker, the buffet and then the stall. What speed about will that happen at? Good question, I don't know. That depends on our weight. That's an, that's an interesting piece of trivia is that it depends on your weight and like, like these airplanes don't just stall at a certain number. It's all based on configuration and weight. That's right, yeah. Okay, so we are power idle and I'm actually surprised how it's flying and it's staying level. <laughs> like it's really not slowing down that fast. Yeah, you're doing great. And just hold that attitude. Okay, so I'm gonna hold the up. No, that's already happening, eh? So I recover immediately or want to let it get mushy for a bit? Well, that stick shaker. So stick shaker says get, fix yeah. it. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna do one more so time. Just keep pulling back. There's your shaker. Go ahead, mash it. Uh, oh, that was it. That's it. I guess that's secondary, going. secondary, yep. yeah. So you went into that last stick shaker at 4,800 feet and then you started climbing back up at 4,300, so you lost 500. Yeah. Let's try and get that down a little bit. So upon it recognition, now you know what to feel for. You felt it get a little flood, uh, buff it, and you're gonna try not to get that secondary stall. So I'll let the stick shaker happen, and I'll let the buff it happen, then I'll recover? Or do I recover right when I feel stick shaker? Recover when you feel a stick shaker, but try not to give up too much while you're waiting for that power surge to come in. Okay. You're just gonna get it kinda in the stick shaker. You're still flying in stick shaker. You're not flying when you're in the buff. All right? Got it. Let's try that. Okay, power is idle. We're gonna hold this altitude and uh, lead off speed and wave to stick shaker. And I did feel the plane get mushy and all that stuff, but what impressed me was that it really flies like an airplane. It's not this big chunk of metal that falls out of the sky. Like it glided beautifully. It, with no power and holding altitude, it just kept flying level. The speed bled off very slowly. It actually took a long time to stall it. Yeah, I'm amazed at how well the thing flies. Like with no power, it ain't dropping out of the sky and the speed is bleeding off slowly. <clears throat> just a reminder, go to flightchops.com to win that A20. I tried too hard to not lose it. <laughs> so stalling the airplane was cool. The stick shaker definitely gets your attention, there's no question. I can see how if you're distracted, you could lose track of your airspeed suddenly, but with the stick shaker, like bam, it wakes you up, man. I thought the, uh, the pitch change was fine. You came out of the stall, you were waiting, and then you flew right back up. Nice. If you avoided the secondary stall, it just kind of kept it right there on the tickle uh, and flew right out. But that's kind of gamesmanship. Yeah. It's not unsafe. Right. Uh, we were at 5,000 feet, and you can see that happening, right? Yeah. The guy's not watching his power. He had it back. He's making a turn. He's talking. He's looking outside. All of a sudden, the stick shaker goes. So this was an awesome experience, and I'm really happy to share it. And again, huge thanks to Paul for being a part of it. The debriefing was awesome, but he was also totally a producer, helping get everything arranged and sorted out in Atlanta. You know, I think it'd be different in a big glass new airplane, but the six pack is the six pack. Throttle's the throttle. The throttle. This whole airplane, I think, is great. So I can't recommend this enough. It's really affordable if you share it with a few friends. And you can take it a little more seriously like I did, or you can totally have fun with it like Brock did. All right. So we're really doing this. Over to the right one.
Thanks again to the Delta Flight Museum for putting up with the filming. What's neat about the 737 is that uh, you're engrossed. You're, you're completely one with the airplane. Yeah, no, I felt like I was flying it. It was pretty cool. So thanks again to the supporters on Patreon for helping make this possible. And please visit flightshops.com to check out the monthly contest. The sponsors are giving away nearly $1,000 worth of stuff, but this month we're adding a Bose A20. I'm really excited to give that away, and I want to see one of you guys get it. And as always, keep your flight chops sharp. You know, airspeed, throttle, and your pitch. Right. And it's just like a, it's just like a J3 cup. <laughs> right? I mean, almost. 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 <laughs> All right, good times, man. Thanks a lot. That was awesome. You did it great. Thanks.